Hi, and welcome back. I pray I have the audio on uh, settings on this new camera correct. If not, you're going to hear me in a wind tunnel again. Working on it. Just working on it. Today's going to be a very quick video because Grandma's got a game night that she's going to go to for the friends. And it is a so, kind of like a munchy potluck. Um, there's already going to be lasagna and hamburger sliders there. Uh, somebody's already bringing salad and garlic bread for two. And so I am going to go ahead and bring veggies, a dip, and some hot chocolate for dessert. So let's get started. Okay, so, so for the dip, what we're going to do is we're going to make some hummus. Okay, kind of generic, quick and easy. What you're going to need to do is have two pints or one quart of already canned and processed chickpeas. You're going to add the chickpeas and the water all at once. The recipe calls for three cloves of garlic. We're going to add one to two tablespoons. I like mine a little bit garlicky, but we are uh, going to be uh, making this for other people who may not like garlic. So we're going to add one tablespoon. For the tahini, you can either get it in a can like this, which I prefer because it's easier to stir it in this can than it is in the plastic um, uh, bottle that some, it sometimes comes with or it comes in. Okay, it's going to ask for one half cup. I'm going to add about a half a cup along with the oil. Two wedges or half a half a lemon, a preserved lemon. This has enough salt in it right now where we don't have to add so much salt to this. But you do want to go ahead and make sure you make sure of the, of the um, you also want to make sure that all the seeds are out of the lemon before you put it in. So we're going to be chopping it up. You want that whole lemon flavor in here. Okay, so since the, the preserved lemons have salt in them, you don't have to add as much salt. Half a teaspoon will do nicely. And that's hummus. All you have to do is blend it smooth. And you've got dip. Once refrigerated, this will stiffen up, and you can serve with chips, bread, cheese, veggies, anything you wish. Now that the hummus is nice and tucked in the refrigerator, we're going to go ahead and work on the uh, vegetables. There are some people that are going to be at this um, you know, game night that do have dietary restrictions. No onions, no salt, and no spices. So in those guidelines, 
we are going to go ahead and uh, roast some cauliflower and uh, use some spices, but not that many. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and parboil the cauliflower florets. I am using patrick pa packaged. You can use whole if you wish, just cut it up. This one seems to be a little bit easier for me. Uh, we're going to put water in here, the florets in here, put a lid on this, and let it boil a little bit and cook. That way, whenever um, these are done and cooked through, you can go ahead and, and fry these up and add uh, spices. that is nice and boiled, the water is nice and boiled off, go ahead and add your olive oil. Enough to fry it. Now, I do apologize. If I didn't say iodized salt, it was, was, was not to bring. I use sea salt in my house. Um, I, uh, the person who is requesting no iodized salt in the house or in, in, in the meal. This is the smoked sea salt that I made. Add just enough salt until your ancestors tell you to stop. Same thing with garlic powder. I'm going to add a little bit of ground cumin to this just to give it a little bit of a smoky flavor, not much. And then a little bit of turmeric. It'll give it a nice yellow color and it won't, um, it'll help with the inflammation because they're all disabled vets or spouses. Okay, and then you want to go ahead and fry this a little. We're going to add a little bit of lemon juice to this and a little bit of lime zest. Now, if you don't have any lemon juice, like I just discovered, what you want to do is you take one of your your um, preserved lemons, blend it with a little bit of water, and then you want to strain it so you're not getting any big chunks out of it. That and you get all the seeds. this much, about a quarter teaspoon, not much lemon or, or lime zest. You already have a lot with the, uh, going on with the lemon. It just adds another depth of sweetness. Mm. 
Now, we're going to add a dab of tomato paste. You want to scooch everything to the sides. Add about a teaspoon to a tablespoon of tomato paste, and then you want to let that bloom all on its own. That means cooking it up a little bit because tomato paste on its own is kind of blah, but once you get it warmed up and fried up, it starts becoming, a, a, it, the t flavor starts enhancing itself. Then you want to add that to the cauliflower. Now, if you notice that everything's starting to become mush and kind of, kind of looking like scrambled eggs, we want that. Do you know why? You can actually put this on top of the hummus and eat it with the vegetables. Mini bell peppers, celery, chips. You name it. This is an extra. This is an additive for your hummus. this to cool just as, just like with the hummus. You can warm this up whenever you get to your party. I mean there's only going to be five of us so I'm not making much but if you're having like a big family get together or something like that you're going to want to make at least four times more. Okay now we have the hummus. We have the uh, mix-ins with the cauliflower. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut up veggies. Uh, I've got carrots. Not going to do so many of those. Most of us don't have our teeth. Celery and cucumbers. Grandpa is going to be bringing uh, the mini bell peppers to be able to add to this after work. He's at work right now. And our worms are going to be happy today. Now that we have the all the munchies, we're going to go ahead and work on the hot cocoa. You're going to want a 3.2 ounce bag of dried powder milk. Hot cocoa butter. Let me say that again. Baking cocoa powder. Coffee creamer. sugar, and if you can find it, powdered whipping cream. And this is the sweet whipping cream, the one that kind of like uh, the Cool Whip that you put on top of the um, of your pie. This is what we want. Additions to your hot cocoa powder can be 
marshmallows. I recommend that if you have a dehydrator, that you dehydrate your marshmallows before adding it to the powder for storage. Or you can add fresh as you make the cups. I'm going to add sprinkles. These were on the 75% uh, off sale after Christmas. Can't go wrong with sprinkles. Oh, and by the way, if you make chocolate bombs, you can put this in the, in the middle of the chocolate shell to be melted. Okay. Just if you do marshmallows, don't put them in fresh. Dehydrate them. Trust me, you want to dehydrate your, your marshmallows. You'll thank me. Half gallon jar. You're going to want to add one cup of sugar. A whole packet of uh, instant not uh, in instant dry milk. One half cup of your sweetened whipping cream. One half cup coffee creamer. cup of cocoa powder. I may have enough. I have a little bit more. I'm going to add it all. I'll get more. Sprinkles. Sprinkles to your heart desires. For me, that's a whole bottle. Okay, you can either stir this or shake it. See how difficult it is to stir it all of it? And you have to you have to really get in there. Just to put the lid on here and shake it. That's all you need. So that's about a one and a half cups fish of cocoa powder. One 3.2 ounce bag of instant milk, half a cup of coffee creamer, half a coffee, coffee, half a cup of uh, whipped cream uh, dried, and a cup of sugar. And there you've got some cocoa mix. You can use this for gifts. You can use this for parties. Just make sure that whoever is drinking it is not lactose intolerant or diabetic. All right, thank you for joining me. You have a good day. Sorry about this short video. Lots to do. We've been working on uh, some small products around the house, getting things repaired replaced a shelf 
fell in my laundry room and we had to put it back up. That was fun project today. Everything happens on your day off, including this. So we'll see you next time.